Well, that concludes the review of normal physiology and how the ECG is generated. I'm now going to ask David a few questions to clarify our understanding of this matter. So, David, the, the, the normal components of an ECG, what are we looking for? Well, we're obviously going to look for a, a P wave, which is our atrial um, contractility. And, of course, these need to always be married to a QRS, which is the ventricle, to provide a normal um, ECG rhythm. So as we look at the ECG, we're going to look for P waves that are all erect, all looking exactly the same, or the same morphology as we, uh, as we call it. The same, the same shape, really. Yeah. Look, all married to a QRS within a set distance, okay, a set time. And obviously there'll be T wave um, following the QRS, which is repolarization. Now, what's the most common dysrhythmia causing a cardiac arrest situation? That would be ventricular fibrillation. And what do you see in a ventricular fibrillation? In a ventricular fibrillation we would see a chaotic um, irregular heart rate on the screen. Uh, and, and what's the myocardium actually doing with the ventri during the ventricular fibrillation? The, the each cell is sending off its own impulse and therefore it is, as the rhythm says, fibrillating. It's just quivering within the Do you want to demonstrate it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. So, so put the demonstration in. Right. Right, that's fine. So, let, let so what we're seeing here is a chaotic, irregular rhythm okay, of the heart fibrillating. This rhythm would be one of the rhythms that we would need to carry out uh, defibrillation on. Okay, and as we can see, it, it's the amplitude's constantly changing and there's no discernible pattern to it. Is this mostly generated by the ventricular myocardium? It is, yeah. And there seems to be quite a lot of deflection here. It's a fairly coarse rhythm, this isn't it? It is, although you can eventually this will lead to a fine ventricular fibrillation and then on to asystole. So you're more likely to see this uh, as soon as the arrest is, is diagnosed, yes. early on in the arrest? This, this, this rhythm would have a better, far be better prognosis than fine VF. Providing it was defibrillated. Providing it was defibrillated early. So if ventricular fibrillation is not treated, what would happen to the patient? Well, eventually the, the rhythm would become a fine ventricular fibrillation and then into asystole, where there's no electrical activity in the heart at all. So asystole really is describing heart which is, is dead. Yes. There's nothing happening at all. That's correct, yes. So I think it'd be helpful now to look at the, uh, the rhythms that we would associate on the ECG screen that represent those pathological conditions. Well here David, I can see in this line that it looks fairly flat but it's a little bit jaggedy. So are we actually looking at a fine VF here or, or is this an asystole? Well, we may well be looking at, at an asystole, but what we need to do if we see this on the screen is increase our amplitude. Okay. By increasing our amplitude, what we may decide is that this is a fine VF and treat it as such. So we see some small deflection across the baseline. If we decide that it's not a fine VF, then we're going to treat this as an asystole. So these fine deflections represent uh, myocardial flutter, myocardial fibrillation? It does, yes. Right. And so what would it look like if it was a pure asystole? What we would see would be a completely flat line, although it's difficult to see on this monitor, but a wandering baseline. What we'll see if the leads are off is a completely flat, straight line. So if you got someone who'd been, if you went to the morgue, someone had been dead for two or three days, you would get a wandering baseline? Eventually it would flatten out. It would flatten out eventually. eventually. So, so why does it wander in people that are in asystole, in the acute so medical there, situation? There may well still be some small amount of myocardial contractility at that point. 